sciatic nerve course and branches to the leg and to the foot. The sciatic nerve ends just above the popliteal fossa by dividing into the common perineal nerve and the tibial nerve. The tibial nerve supplies the posterior muscles of the leg. It supplies the medial head of the gastrocnemius, the lateral head of the gastrocnemius, the soleus, the tibialis posterior, the flexor digitorum longus, and the flexor hallucis longus. The common perineal nerve is a branch of the sciatic nerve that travels posterior to the tendon of the biceps femoris and it passes across the neck of the fibula. It pierces the perineus longus, then divide into the deep and the superficial perineal nerves. The superficial perineal nerve, which supplies the muscles of the lateral aspect of the leg, the perineus longus, and the perineus bravus. The superficial perineal nerve it is called superficial or subcutaneous because some parts will go through the muscle and some parts are cutaneous. In the proximal part of the leg, the superficial perineal nerve goes through the substance of the perineus longus muscle. In the middle third of the leg, the nerve is located between the perineus longus and perineus brevis. Then it is seen in the groove between the perineus brevis and the extensor digitorum longus. In the distal third of the leg, the superficial perineal nerve then pierces the fascia to become superficial. At this level, the superficial perineal nerve can be seen through the skin. In the ankle, the superficial perineal nerve divides into intermediate dorsal cutaneous and medial dorsal cutaneous branches. Just remember, the superficial perineal nerve has a variable course and becomes superficial to the perineus longus muscle in the distal third of the leg as you can see here in this picture. The superficial perineal nerve divides into the sensory branches that supply the skin of the dorsum of the foot, as you can see here. The other branch is the deep perineal nerve. The deep perineal nerve pierces the intermuscular septum and supplies the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg the tibialis anterior, the extensor digitorum longus, the extensor hallucis longus. It also gives innervation to the perineus tertius and to the extensor digitorum brevis on the top of the foot. The deep perineal nerve gives a sensory branch to the first web space between the first and the second toes this is an important area for diagnosing problems with the deep perineal nerve or diagnosing compartment syndrome that affects the anterior compartment of the leg. So if you have an injury to the common perineal nerve, you will cause problems for both the superficial perineal nerve and the deep perineal nerve. The superficial perineal nerve main function is eversion of the foot. The deep perineal nerve main function is dorsiflexion of the ankle and the toes. A deep perineal nerve injury will give a foot drop. The superficial perineal nerve may become injured during fasciotomy of the lateral compartment of the leg. The lateral incision is usually made halfway between the tibia and the fibula for release of the anterior and lateral compartments. Here you can see we released the anterior compartment and then after that we released the lateral compartment. Be aware that 
there is a nerve there, the nerve will be injured during release of this compartment. Try to see that nerve and try to avoid it. This nerve can also be injured during antero lateral extensile approach that is used for treatment of pylon fractures. So here is the sensation of the top of the foot. The top of the foot is L5. The medial side is L4. The lateral side is S1. And when you look into which nerve is involved at the top of the foot, here is the first web space supplied by the deep perineal nerve, and the top of the foot is supplied by the superficial perineal nerve. And the lateral side of the foot, you have the shoulder nerve. How about the bottom of the foot? Here you can have the sensation at the bottom of the foot as illustrated here. You can see the area of the lateral plantar nerve, the medial plantar nerve, the medial calcaneal branches. You can also see the area of the saphenous nerve and the area of the shoulder nerve. The tibia nerve passes into the foot running posterior to the medial malleolus and beneath the flexor retinaculum. At this level, the posterior tibial nerve divides into medial and lateral plantar branches and medial calcaneal branch. The tibial nerve gives innervation to all muscles of the foot except the extensor digitorum brevis. The medial plantar nerve will give branches to the abductor hallucis, the flexor digitorum brevis, the flexor hallucis brevis, and to the first lumbar kiln, and will also give digital nerves to the medial three and a half toes. So consider the medial plantar nerve innervation like the medium nerve. The lateral plantar nerve will give digital nerves to the lateral one and a half toes. That sounds like the ulnar nerve. The lateral plantar nerve give branches to all interosseae and from the second to the fourth lumbar kills. The lateral plantar nerve give branches to abductor digiti minimi, the quadratus planti, and adductor hallucis. The lateral plantar nerve is interesting because this nerve gives innervation to most intrinsic muscles of the foot. The first branch of the lateral plantar nerve is the Baxter nerve. It is an important nerve, especially in the differential diagnosis of plantar fasciitis. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.